like to start to understand how you developed your, your, your characters, Danny and, uh, and Colleen. Is there anything about their personality in which you can, in some way, relate your own personality? Um, I try to keep Danny as open and as vulnerable as possible. I think that's one of the key aspects of Danny. Like, it's his optimism and it's his naivety and it's his strength. But I think where that all boils down to is his ability to be open and vulnerable. And so when kind of um, approaching this role, I tried to be as open-minded as I could be. So not just making him a warrior or not just making him a billionaire, you know, trying to find what that actually meant for the inside. And uh, yeah. I tried to uh, walk around with a katana a lot. Mm -hmm. And I use a katana on a regular basis to <laughs> take caps off bottles. Open and tins of to, fruit. When I needed to turn off the light, I would use my katana. Um, when I needed to undress myself to get into the bath, I would often use my katana. That was a good one. <laughs> 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 but you know, it, I, I saw only the, the first six episodes, and you know a little bit even more and more about uh, Danny's backstory, but basically you know nothing about Colleen's backstory. Mm -hmm. How did you work in order to... Did you make your own backstory about this character? Oh no, it comes out. Um, Colleen's a real... She's a a very secretive character and she has one big, big secret that she's keeping from Danny and um, you really start to understand her backstory as we go along. Um, she has, it's funny how their lives have mirrored each other in a lot of ways. Um, Colleen's mother died when she was a child and her dad just abandoned her and so she has an abandonment complex. Uh, Danny's an orphan so by all rights they could be uh, in opposite places like she could have turned out like Danny Danny could have turned out like her um, and I think that we explore that much more in the later episodes and um, my relationships with other characters that start to come in in the second half of the series and yeah can't wait to see that uh, okay I, I want to talk about I, I was stunned by the fighting scene in the elevator and the Asli with That's cool. That, 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 I think that, that's one of the best kung fu fighting oh, thank scenes you. I've seen in, in ages. Oh. What did you work in order to, to create that? Well, uh, we had a fantastic director, uh, uh, Miguel Sapochnik, who worked on Game of Thrones with us. Um, he actually did the Battle of the Bastards. So he was probably one of the best directors to kind of take on such a huge, um, <laughs> such a huge fight. Um, but that was that was a great fight. It was it was many different parts, and uh, we really shot the hell out of it. I think we filmed it over three four days. That was a long one, um, I remember. And it was yeah, it was long. But we had a great we had a great stunt stunt crew. Like, actually, um, one of the actors, one of the one of the guys that I th the the one that punches Joy at the end. He was actually a, our mentor. He was actually the. Um, Shane was uh, the guy that taught us martial arts on the show, and he actually cool. had a role in in the show, which was really cool. Really nice to see him kind mm -hmm. of get his acting chops on sweet. as well. Yeah. Um, mm. On the other side, which has been for both of you the the most challenging scene to shoot, but uh, not in a physical way, in an emotional way. There, there was a I think, especially in the second half, there was um, when when things really get serious between me and you. We had some very intense. There was yeah, scenes. there was a hard scene when when. My big secret is revealed. Y yeah, we yeah. Ha and we had a, a real. It's Moment. a big character shift. Yeah, and that um, was that was. Uh, yeah. 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 It's good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, earlier in the roundtable, you also mentioned that your characters will be very different in the Defenders TV series. Can you talk about the the, the journey of these two characters? All along these two TV series. Yeah, well, well, when we first see Danny Rand in Iron Fist, he's like a child trapped in a man's body, full of wonder, naive, very vulnerable, doesn't understand his purpose or his responsibility. Throughout the course of Iron Fist, he comes to term with what he actually has to do in his life. And I think by the end of um, Iron Fist, he understands why he's in New York mm -hmm. and he kind of casts away his childish needs and he's more focused and more driven. He's almost like a, a teenager that's just kind of like gone out of puberty and now is kind of in adulthood. And the Defenders, where it picks up, he's, a, he's, he's on a mission. He knows what he's meant to be doing. And then by the end of Defenders, he has become the I Iron Fist. Yeah. And with Colleen, um, Defenders really finds Colleen having to deal with the aftermath of, of uh, something that ha happens that's very emotional in episode 12 of Iron Fist. Um, 
and she's just, kind of, she's just trying to figure out who she is in relation to these superheroes and, and what she's supposed to be doing with her life. Everything is taken away from her across Iron Fist. Slowly she's stripped. Um, and so she's really, she's bare in, in Defenders and very vulnerable.